uh, please stand and remain standing for the national anthem. Please join me in the singing of our national anthem.
Please be seated. Good morning. I'm Dr. David Babb, Associate Dean of the College of Professional and Continuing Studies. And on behalf of the University of Oklahoma Board of Regents, University President, President Joe Haraz, Dean Martha Bands, and the faculty and staff of the College of Professional and Continuing Studies, welcome to our convocation ceremony recognizing our December 21, 2021 graduates. Graduates, this is a wonderful day. A day you become a graduate of the University of Oklahoma. Congratulations on meeting this milestone. We, like so many of your family members, are so proud of you and are excited to celebrate with you today. Today, you join thousands of alumni who have graduated from the flagship institution of higher education for the state of Oklahoma. Not only is this the state's premier university, but it also continues to emerge as one of the outstanding public universities in the entire country. We also want to emphasize how proud you should be of the fact that you are completing your degree from the College of Professional and Continuing Studies. As you know, our college focuses on helping working adults and emerging young professionals, individuals like you, to achieve your educational dreams. For some of you, that's meant overcoming significant life obstacles and unemployment challenges. For others, it's meant giving up your weekends and evenings to study or to practice your aviation skills. We know that the demands on your time have been substantial, and we're proud of the perseverance and commitment represented by you reaching this day successfully. I will also note that you are graduating from one of the largest and fastest growing colleges here at the University of Oklahoma. In addition, we are the largest college to offer fully online degree programs in the state of Oklahoma and are recognized nationally for several of those programs and for our service to veterans. While these recognitions are significant, they are merely a byproduct of our unwavering mission. And that is to help you achieve your goals, enhance your career, improve your family's quality of life, and most importantly, to help you become an informed, active, and engaged citizen of this state and of this country. To that end, I hope that your time with us has been indelibly changed. And that has, sorry, let's try that again. To this end, <laughs> we hope that your time with us has indelibly changed you and that has been an important part of what will become your lifelong educational journey. We are honored that you chose OU as your academic home and are so happy to celebrate you today. We have become an important, you have become an important part of our college and we hope that you'll stay in touch. We want to know where you go from here and look forward to hearing how you're helping make our world a better place. At this time, it is my privilege to introduce and recognize the other members of today's platform party. I would request each uh, one to stand um, as I announce your name, um, and we just ask that um, uh, everyone wait uh, till the end to hold, you know, hold your applause until they've been introduced. Um, so we have um, Dr. George Henderson, our convocation speaker for today, Dr. Jay Hall, Assistant Dean of Curriculum and Faculty Support, Dr. Johnny Margaret McConnell, Assistant Dean of Student Success, and Dr. Martha Bands, Dean of the College of Professional and Continuing Studies and Associate Provost for Continuing Education, who, by the way, will be presenting you with your uh, di convocation diploma cover as you cross the stage. 
Please join me in thanking these guests and members of our administrative staff for joining today's festivities. We also want to recognize our faculty and staff today, many of whom played an important part in your education. Representing our faculty for today's event are our faculty marshals, Dr. Jay Hall and Dr. Johnny Margaret McConnell, and we are grateful for their assistance throughout today's activities. At this time, I would like to ask all those members of our faculty and staff who are in attendance to please stand so that we can recognize your contribution to our college's work. <laughs> it is also a privilege for me to introduce today's banner carrier, Jackson Grow. Jackson is earning his BA in criminal justice and graduates with a 344 GPA. His complete biography including his significant community service and professional accomplishments can be found in the convocation program. Congratulations, Jackson. And now I would like to introduce Dr. Martha Bands, Dean of the College of Professional and Continuing Studies. Thank you, Dr. Babb. Good morning, graduates. Okay, that, you can do better than that. Good morning, graduates. Much better. As Dr. Babb indicated, my name is Martha Banz, and I serve as Dean for the College of Professional and Continuing Studies. And it is such a wonderful pleasure for me to add my congratulations to those that you've already heard uh, this morning. And it's even more wonderful to be able to celebrate these accomplishments in person. Yes rather than some of the other ways that we've had to celebrate over the last many months. We are so extremely proud of your accomplishments, and I hope you are as proud of yourself as we are of you. At each convocation, I am reminded of a very short poem that provides a visual picture um, for the journey that each of you have been on uh, over the however long your time has been with us as you've completed your degree. It's a very short poem, as I said, just four lines long, and it's credited to a playwright, 20th century British playwright by the name of Christopher Loeb. And it goes like this. Come to the edge, but, but, but we might fall. Come to the edge, but <laughs> it, it, it's way too high. Come to the edge. So they came, and he pushed them, and they flew. When you started this journey, you probably wondered whether you would ever see this day come, maybe even had some doubts about whether it would be worth it. But as Dr. Babb indicated in his remarks, we hope that your time here has changed you and made you realize that you, too, can fly. Thank you for the opportunity that we have had for walking you to the edge and for pushing you and for giving you the tools that will help you take flight in the next chapter of your life. Today we have two groups of students that I especially want to recognize. Um, the first, I'd like to ask those of you who are first generation college graduates to stand, that is if your parents uh, are not college graduates, please stand, because want, we want to recognize you for the pioneers that you are. If you're first gen, please stand. Thank you, you may be seated. In Oklahoma, less than one-fourth of the population uh, has completed a baccalaureate degree, and even much fewer than that hold graduate level credentials, and we know that it takes an awful lot of courage uh, to set your sights on achieving a college uh, or graduate degree. And we're glad not only that you made that decision, but that you've persevered to accomplishment. I am firmly convinced that in doing so, you have changed not only your own life, but you've also changed the life of future generations in your family. We can't be prouder of you than we are right now, and we're honored that you chose us as your partner in taking that step to make your dreams come true. 
The next group that I would like to ask to stand are all of our military affiliated graduates. If we have any of our military or law enforcement folks here, if you would please stand. In uh, professional and continuing studies, thank you, you may be seated, we are particularly proud that a very large portion, a large subset of our students are military affiliated, a little more than 35% uh, on average, and represent all branches of the armed forces and all uh, aspects of law enforcement. We're also honored that you have chosen us as your partner as well and want to thank you for your service. As uh, has already been noted, many of you have faced nearly insurmountable odds to get to this day. Um, you are probably, like so many of our students, already balancing family responsibilities, full-time jobs, military commitments, community involvement, even before you started this journey to complete your degree. And who could have ever anticipated that on top of all of those regular responsibilities and going back to school, you'd face the challenge of a worldwide pandemic and social unrest like we've rarely seen before. You probably did wonder at a number of points along the way whether you'd ever see this day come and whether in fact you would uh, be able to persevere and had doubts about keeping on toward the goal. But I am here today to tell you, regardless of which degree you're getting, it was and it will be worth it. It is such a great pleasure for me to introduce our convocation speaker this morning, Dr. George Henderson. His full biography is in your program, uh, and I invite you to review it in some detail to see the incredibly wide array of his accomplishments beyond the few things that I will briefly highlight here by way of introduction. Uh, when Dr. Henderson arrived in 1967, he joined only two other full-time African-American faculty members at the Norman campus. And uh, shortly thereafter, he was named to his first professorship, being designated as the Sylvan N. Goldman Professor of Human Relations Education and Sociology. Over the remainder of his career, he held three additional distinguished professorships, being designated as a David Ross Boyd Professor, a Regents Professor, and a Kerr-McGee Presidential Professor. He founded OU's Human Relations Department in 1970 and served as its chair for 20 years. And from 1996 to 2000, he was the dean of what at the time was called the College of Liberal Studies and is now known as the College of Professional and Continuing Studies. Yes, the one you're graduating from today. As dean during that time, Dr. Henderson's leadership and vision were truly pivotal in transforming the college and laying the foundation for its current status as a premier provider of online adult learning degree programs. From the brief summary, you can see that Dr. Henderson was not only the first African American in Oklahoma to hold a distinguished professorship, but he was also the first African American at OU to create a degree granting program and the first African-American dean of a degree-granting college here on the Norman campus. Although he retired officially from the university in 2006, he has continued to maintain an active writing, speaking, and teaching schedule throughout the state and the country. As a civil rights pioneer in Oklahoma higher education, Dr. Henderson has accomplished far more than most throughout his career and his life. The list of honors and awards that is provided in your program are a powerful tribute to a life well lived, a life invested in others, and in making our world a more humane and more equitable place. His induction into the Oklahoma Hall of Fame, the Oklahoma Higher Education Hall of Fame, the Oklahoma African American Hall of Fame, as well as his receiving the State of Oklahoma Black Heritage Lifetime Achievement Award, all speak to his transformative influence over the last six decades, as does his designation in 2015 by Oklahoma Today as one of the 45 most influential African American Oklahomans. Having written 35 books and published more than 50 articles, presented papers at over 100 conferences, and provided consultancy to dozens of state and national organizations, 
Dr. Henderson's influence extends far beyond the borders of Oklahoma. Personally, I have found his most recent book called Cultural Diversity, Inclusion, and Justice, Being a Community Activist, which was published in 2020, to be an extremely helpful resource, providing both insight and practical advice for those among us who seek a better and more equitable world. The many things that I've highlighted speak volumes about Dr. Henderson's accomplishments and accolades. What may be less apparent, though, is what a genuinely wonderful person he is. <laughs> a deeply wise, insightful, articulate, energetic, authentic, and kind soul. One who not only does profoundly good work, but one who cares about those around him and cares deeply for the future world we are building together. For those of you who may not be aware, the College of Professional and Continuing Studies was founded in 1961, so it's been our privilege uh, to mark 2021 as the college's 60th anniversary. So as I was contemplating then how we might best bring closure to this anniversary year, I could think of no one better to serve as our convocation speaker than its former dean and transformer extraordinaire, Dr. George Henderson. Dr. Henderson, please come share with us. Well, you've done it. You've accomplished what many individuals thought would not be done. Overcome obstacles, had the patience, the tenacity, and the ability to be where you are now, celebrating this opportunity. For the graduates here, you're so vain, I bet you think I was talking about you. <laughs> Let's set the record straight for all of the individuals, parents, children, uh, spouses, friends, would you stand, please, so we can recognize you? That's the right order of things. Don't you, with your wonderful degrees, think that you're better than those who do not have a degree? Or as my mother, who only had a sixth grade education, said, don't you become an educated fool, George. I'm sure you're not that kind of person. But what she also instilled in me is the fact that it's true. It does take a village or a tribe to raise a child, to accomplish the unbelievable. As an elder in this village called the University of Oklahoma, I have a special place in my heart for the college that you're in. This college is a dream maker. Some of you had dreams of doing and sitting where you are. And the sacrifices were more than enough to go around. Every person in this room, if you're associated with the individual getting a degree, probably sang this song. Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. <laughs> Nobody knows my sorrow. And as the individual supporting the graduates, I know, I know as a father, a grandfather, and a great-grandfather the time that was taken from you so that they could be sitting here today. They can never get that time back. But they get you with a degree to pass on that patience, that tenacity, and that courage to the next generation of us. 
We need you more now than ever before. And please don't listen to the naysayers who say that nothing's changed. If nothing has changed, I should not be here. If nothing has not changed, most of you should not be here. Excuse me, damn right things have changed, but not enough. I'm a civil rights warrior. We declared victory too soon. And so the problems that we now are encountering were the ones that we started to try to eradicate. Don't you declare victory too soon with your education. Be better parents and friends and loved ones and professional workers or workers of any kind. Education without a purpose is a meaningless activity. If it's, if it's education to be a better spouse, father, mother, whatever, that's worth the degree. Lord knows there have been times in which those of you sitting here have felt neglected. And as an old country song goes, maybe I never told you all those lonely, lonely times. You were always on my mind, the graduates can sing. Little things I could have said and done, I just never took the time. Well, now that you have your degree, take the time and say thank you. There are some invisible names on every degree and it's the people in that village or tribe who went through this journey successfully with you. So always, always in your heart, let your head understand that what we are about today is making dreams for yet another generation of us. Let the little ones in here see. Behold, the children in here the possibility of you achieving this height also. And behold, the loved ones in here, the fact that you devoted precious time and energy so that the next generation may be sitting here or somewhere else like here, but let them be what they can and must be. I have no words of wisdom for you but I do have this thought for you. If you do not use your education to create a better home, a better neighborhood, a better community, or a better workplace, or a better state, or a better nation, or one of those, it was a meaningless exercise. It was just a piece of paper. Don't let it be that. We sang too many years ago, we shall overcome. We're still trying to overcome black and white and brown and all the colors in between, the divisive things between us. Let us join mind and hand and heart again, graduates, because you now have the responsibility or are continuing the responsibility that you've always had since you've been working or whatever you're doing to be responsible for that next generation of us. I'm always mindful of this thought. I could have gone both ways. I could have gone with my friend Malcolm X. I could have gone with my friend Martin Luther King Jr. My mother made me go to church and I listened to the minister and so I decided that I didn't have an option. I was going with Martin. Whatever way you go, let it be for the children. I heard a little one cry. What a beautiful sound. That little one will be dreaming someday. That little one will be sleeping and growing up and becoming another one of us but not exactly us because one of each of us is enough. That's what my wife tells me all the time. 
This occasion is about us. We do this a lot in here. We do this a lot in my family. Together, always together, we shall overcome. We shall overcome this COVID thing. We shall overcome whatever is thrown at us if we dare try. Good gracious, you overcame some of the courses that you thought you were gonna fail. I believe in you. I have faith in you. I don't know you, but I love you. I love the thought of you. This 89-year-old man loves the thought of you. Whatever you do, do it sincerely. Do it honestly. Do it with integrity. Speak your truth and build your history. My resume reads like an obituary. That's not what I want people to think of me. I want them to think of me as a human being who tried to be a humane being. And wherever he did laid his hand and hat, he tried to make things better. With your degrees, please, 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 Try to make things better, and don't give up. Don't quit. Don't become the pessimist. Oh, Lord, we need you now. I'm glad you're here. I celebrate you here. But I celebrate. I celebrate. And I cry. And I think. What if we were wrong in bestowing a degree upon you? No, 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 we were not wrong. So then I say to myself, what will they do and what will they be? This much I do know, we don't need another hero. We need another and a lot of more heroes and heroines the hard work of family building and community building rests not with one person or one professor or one whatever. It rests with those of us in the village or the tribe. Do it well, my friends. Do it well. This is a time to celebrate. It's, a, it's about you. So I end as I began. I love you. I respect you, I don't know you, but I believe in you because that's what we always do until the last breath. We must believe in you. We must believe in this college and support it. Hush, hush, somebody's calling your name. Somebody's calling your name, saying, with your degree and knowledge, help me. Hush, hush. Now do it, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Henderson, for those inspiring words. May we take them to heart, all of us, not just the graduates, but all of us. We have a small gift for you to commemorate this day. Um, we don't want you to forget us because we will never forget you like you could ever forget us. We know that we are in your heart and we're grateful. So we have a set of bookends that we want uh, for, to, for you to have on your shelf with the books that you're still continuing to write. So. Thank you. 
I'll put them on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's the what's the electronic equivalent of bookends these days, you know, off of your uh, off of your iPad. <laughs> oh goodness. Thank you again, Dr. Henderson. Graduates, we are now coming to the portion of the program that you've been waiting for. Uh, in just a moment, you'll be escorted to the stage, and as you are, we ask that you give your name card to Dr. Babb, uh, who will announce your name, and then you'll proceed across the stage over here, uh, where I'll greet you in front of the OU seal, and you'll have your university cover, your diploma cover with you, and that's where we'll take the official uh, graduation photo, and then you'll exit off uh, on our right here, uh, where you'll be directed for yet another picture. Um, since we are in, uh, continuing to be in these rather unusual times, graduates, I want you to be comfortable in whatever form you want the picture to take. I'm personally happy if you want a handshake, fist bump, elbow, just tell me what you want, uh, and I'll be happy to oblige because I want you to be comfortable as you enjoy this day that marks the uh, wonderful celebration of your accomplishments. So just, you know, give me a high sign on what, what your preference is and we'll, we'll make it happen. Audience, we want you to feel free to cheer your graduate and take photographs as they walk across the stage. We have only one rule, and that rule is simply that you not knock anybody else out of the way uh, on your, as you're coming down to get the photo and the enthusiasm that you have for capturing that moment. And now, we are ready to begin recognizing the December 2021 College of Professional and Continuing Studies graduates, starting with the banner carrier and those completing their master's degrees. Master's grads, less than 10% of the American population has completed a graduate degree. So you can count yourselves among a very exclusive group of individuals, but with that comes more responsibility. It's also estimated on a practical side that master's degree translates into increased earning potential of about 10,000 a year, so you might want to have a, a quick chat with your boss Monday morning to remind them of that. For this particular convocation, we have 199 master's graduates who are eligible uh, to participate, uh, some of whom are in attendance today. These represent all of our different program areas, including organizational leadership, criminal justice, human and health services administration, prevention science, museum studies, human relations, and international relations. We are so excited about our graduates' achievements. So on behalf of the graduate student support staff in advising and financial aid and military support and registration and all across the curriculum, congratulations to our master's graduates. So uh, audience, would you join me in congratulating them as a group and then we will call their names one at a time. Jackson Grove. Stacy Porter. Michael Marinelli. Hunter McAllister. Jason Perry. Harrison Foster. Paige Fowser. Amanda Nichols. Jamal Akeem Parker. Alista Stevens. Raymond Pat Patterson.
Amanda Kathleen Tremaine. Anna Sokolowski. Sean McKenna. Marjorie Stiles. Catherine Baker. Erica Mata. Rachel Hall. Sean Michael Ragsdale. Sydney Marie Vance. Monica Stevenson. Armelda Allen. Ted Rose Rember Vince Allen Feeling Catherine Elaine Martin Jacqueline Herlinger. Oh, okay. That was the last of the masters. The rest are bachelor's degrees. Ladies and gentlemen, we're now ready to recognize our bachelor's graduates. As with the other group, we have 220 undergraduate degree candidates this December with a fair number able to join us for today's ceremony. In the program, I would just make a uh, highlight that we have a notation for those graduating with distinction or special distinction. And the, those with distinction, is no, it's noted by one star and have an overall GPA of 3.6 or above. And those with special distinction are noted with two stars and have a GPA 3.8 or above. These are the graduates that are wearing the gold uh, hoods over their graduation robes, and we're especially proud of their accomplishments. We know that for many of you, the road to your bachelor's degree has been really long and hard, but you've persevered and the time has come. So on behalf of all of us here at the college, our student support staff in all of the different areas, advising financial aid, military support, and various programs, congratulations. So audience, would you like to congratulate the bachelors as a group? Nicholas Guerrero. Sean Nicole Oberg. Ryan Corey. Cat Malast.
Aaron Elliott. Noah Atala. Eldon Aselius. Melody Reader. Tanya George. Tracy Detamore. Christopher Nicholas Esparza. Tristan Lenertz. Caitlin Kiros. Matt Gentz. Robert Reedus. Todd Bartz. Landon Ray Chu. Heather Charette. Stephanie Hawk. Leslie Real Rider. Daniel Sager. Jessica Berryman. Jacob Law Meckley. Kirsten Cloud. Zach Koskovich. Kelly Porterfield. <laughs> Stephanie Wren. Austin Minson. Robert Donnelly. Andrew Gerald. 
Andrew Ellis Garrell. Jack Dwyer. Logan Keen. Joanna Happy. Austin Cryer. Kevin Valley. Landon Sharp. Noah Rediger. Tamara Walker. Christopher D. Gress. Brett Barker. Bert Burnside. Bradley Sears. Justin W. Lewis. Kristen Dunning. Christine Saunders. Emily Chavez. Charles William Shamel. Christopher Dearman. Pedro Cadate Madano. Matthew Falkenberry. But certainly not least, Sandra Marin. Would you like to join in one more round of applause for all of our graduates, please? As our, as our graduates are getting resituated, I do have one final word that I want to share with you before we finish up today. And it simply is uh, sharing the words of a song that I think captures our
our sending of you into the world, graduates, and what we hope for you. And it just, it just goes like this. I hope you never lose your sense of wonder. You get, to fill to, you get your fill to eat, but you always keep that hunger. May you never take one single breath for granted, and God forbid that love should ever leave you empty-handed. I hope you still feel small when you stand beside the ocean. And whenever one door closes, I hope one more opens. Promise me, promise us, that you'll give faith a fighting chance, and when you get the choice to sit it out or dance, I hope you dance. I hope you never fear the mountains in the distance and never settle for the path of least resistance. Living might indeed mean taking chances, but they're worth taking. Loving might be a mistake, but it's a mistake worth making. Don't let some hell-bent heart leave you bitter. And when you come close to selling out, reconsider. Give the heavens above more than just a passing glance. And when you get the choice to sit it out or dance, I hope you dance. We are grateful that you have chosen to dance with us here in professional continuing studies over these last months and years as you finish your degree. And we are delighted to send you dancing into your bright and unlimited future. Every year at, during this event, our, a longtime uh, former dean, another longtime former dean, would remind us of the old Oklahoma saying that if you see a turtle on a fence post, you know that it didn't get there by itself. And while that saying is a little bit colloquial, it speaks to the point that Dr. Henderson made and that we are trying to remind you today that you would not be here were it not for those around you, for your tribe, for your family, for your friends, for those that have on whose shoulders you stand. So graduates, we specifically want to give you this opportunity to stand and to recognize your folks who are out there that have supported you on this journey. And you can stay standing, guys. <laughs> so while you're still standing, and I want you to turn and face whoever it was you were connecting with out here in the audience, and as you do that, I want you to move your tassel from the right side of your cap to the left. With this move, <laughs> With, with this move of the tassel from the right to the left, you are paying homage to your new alma mater, the University of Oklahoma. And by moving it to the left side of your cap, you're demonstrating the closeness of your alma mater to your heart. So audience, let's congratulate one more time, and then we will finish up the ceremony. As we, as we come to the end of this convocation ceremony, I'm going to ask Dr. Johnny Margaret McConnell to come to the podium and lead us in the singing of the OU chant. All right, fellow alumni, welcome to the club.
you, thank you. Just as we are, uh, graduates, if you'll be seated just for a second. Um, as we're concluding today's convocation ceremony, I, take, I want to take just a moment of privilege to say thank you. Um, I'd, first, I'd like to extend again a special and warm thank you to Dr. Henderson for being our speaker today. I also want to express our appreciation to Mary Salee. She's hidden over here in the corner, but provides our musical accompaniment and has, as she has for many years. Appreciate her contribution. I'd also like to thank our convocation event manager, Missy Mitchell, as well as the host of staff and faculty um, in attendance today who make this event possible. And uh, last but certainly not least, we want to thank the staff and technicians here in the McCaslin Fieldhouse for their assistance and guidance uh, as they work diligently to help make sure our guests are well served. Finally, graduates, we want to say congratulations to you one more time. We, the administration, the faculty, the staff of the college are deeply, deeply proud of you and celebrate with you today. And we want to thank all of the family and friends who have joined your graduate today, you too should be very, very proud of them and the accomplishments that they represent. As we are now ready to conclude the December 2021 College of Professional and Continuing Studies Convocation, audience, we will ask that you remain seated and in the auditorium until the platform party and the graduates have exited, and then you can meet them out front. Uh, in some past years, students have been allowed to come to the stage to get a picture with the seal, but unfortunately there is a tight uh, convocation schedule for turnaround, so we will not be allowed to do that, but the weather has turned out beautifully, a little bit cool, but bright and sunny, so please feel free to take pictures and hang around outside in front of McCasland uh, for as long as you would like as you are celebrating the wonderful accomplishments of this day. So graduates, would you please stand and we will lead you out with the recessional. Congratulations once again.